well out here kind of just got an open area we've got some grass behind us but definitely got some fish moving there's there's a couple closer to the boat as well but a couple that are sitting out here about about 30 feet and they go those, yeah you can see those two right there really close together they're, they're up really high in the water column only a couple feet down so when they're like that it's important not to get your bait too far under them you don't really want to get it under them at all but definitely not too far under them actually i think there's more than one because i'm seeing fish from there kind of around there's another one moving this way yeah we've got multiple fish several fish out here swimming around i'm going to grab a jerk bait we've got some clouds that have rolled back in so i think i'm going to grab a suspended jerk bait if we can get some of these fish to go oh there's one up high there's my bait all oh, that fish came right to it He bumped it. Get it, fish. There we go. Boy, I had to really, had to kind of work on that one back and forth a little bit to get that fish talked into biting it. And you can see when you do that a lot of times, that's the case. The fish just barely got that back hook. That's all he got. That makes perfect sense because I was watching that fish. He really didn't just charge the bait and bite it really aggressively. Kind of eased up there and eased up. Felt like he bumped it once then come back with that little that little red line treble on the back of that shadow wrap shad was able to get him. That's the way that'll work a lot of times. So when you see that happen, that fish is easing along, easing along, finally takes a little nip at your bait, don't jerk too hard because there's a good chance that fish just barely got the back of it. You know, ideally you're gonna get that bait, you're gonna be able to see that fish a good distance from the boat like I did this one right here. I'm, 60 feet you got that fish out there but sometimes what happens is those fish will track that bait a long ways you can actually see that fish on the surface fighting on that live but those fish will track it a lot of times and, and so often your bite's going to come right beside the boat and a lot of that i think has to do with you know that direction change and and speed change and that fish kind of that bait actually turning and coming upwards you know towards the surface whether that's a jerk bait or that's a crank bait you know with a jerk bait you're able to snap that bait upwards and a lot of times you can kind of get that forward movement that'll trigger those fish into biting but with the crankbait a lot of times that bite just comes right beside the boat on 360 you can actually see some fish you can see the shadows but you can even see the see the dots so you can point live over that way and uh and see them and look at them coming just like that <laughs> I think I actually had a double, but now I only have one of them. Quite certain I had two to start. Oh, that's a really nice one. That's a better than average one right there. That was cool. There were four or five fish that took off after that bait. I swear I think I had a double to start with. But we got one really nice chunky one out of that bunch. That's so awesome. That's the perfect place you want to get them on a jerk bait, right in the corner of the jaw like that. They're going to stay pinned on there good. That's a healthy female there. Pretty girl, thank you. Thank you, fish. The thing that I get with live that I just can't get with that 360 is really seeing just how tall something is. You know, seeing just how high it comes off the bottom, like that that brush there, for example. I know it's up off the bottom because it's coming into coming into the water column there, but I don't know just how high. Do I need a, a jerk bait that runs four feet deep? Do I need one that runs eight or ten feet deep? I really can't tell that. But with live, I can. So I'm pointed at this tree that's up here. It's going to gonna show up up here, up ahead of the boat in this direction. The top of that tree is only two or three, maybe four feet deep. And those fish are suspended right up in the top of it. And that, so that's the same tree right there. It doesn't look nearly as significant just due to the way that it's positioned and the way we're sitting looking at it. But I can make my cast up there with that jerk bait. Saw the bait splash over here. Bait's coming down to it. You know, jerk bait's were largely for me a, a bait that I, I was still going to target target something structure you know uh, a brush pile whatever whatever you may have where you're fishing but with live i'm able to go out honestly in the middle of a lake in the middle of a cove places where to be quite honest i didn't i didn't even realize how many bass lived in some of those areas you know completely away from from any type of cover to begin with just Sometimes they're relating to bait. Sometimes they're just out there just kind of floating is what I would call it. They're, they're not really, you know, around anything. But this situation right here, these are bass I would have never 
I would have never even tried to target. Didn't even know would have existed. You know, I would have been fishing this grass edge and I certainly would have been catching fish, but not not as efficiently as what you can with live by being able to see them. Just like now, putting my bait right on that fish's nose. Being able to, to pick up fish that you would have never, never knew existed. And a bass. We've got a little bit of grass. We've got some sand around. You know, not a lot of big structure right here to be quite honest just the the grass is kind of the main the main thing it seems to be coming out to oh four feet of water maybe it's kind of where the edge of that grass is and these bass are these are pre-spawned fish they've not spawned yet they're just kind of out here floating around there's not much current in here to speak of so there's no reason for them to have to be locked up in anything there's no no heavy cover available and the bait's just kind of out here roaming around in the middle too so that's where the fish are Oh my. <laughs> you barely get it underwater some of the times. Those fish are sitting really, really high in the water column. No doubt you could catch some of these on top water. You can watch them literally watch their chase their buddies in. Oh, that's a fatty. Good, good fatty right there. They're just barely small enough I can get my hands around their back. Get a good grip on them. Pull those red lines out of their mouth. Look at that. Just beautiful specimen of a largemouth bass. If you're new to, to live sonar or anything, I've got it on the trolling motor shaft. So anywhere the head's pointed, whatever direction I'm pointing with that is the direction that, that the transducer is looking as well. And it's really important to make sure you have that transducer lined up perfectly. If you miss, every cast you make is going to miss. Every, you know, every angle of that, it's really, really important. That way you can find your bait quickly. And then I've got mine angled up, actually a little bit flatter of an angle. Um, I think I've got my transducer either set at 70 or 80 degrees. That way I can see my bait splash at 50 and 60 feet. If that bait right there that just hit the water, I can pick it up as soon as you get it underneath the water. When it's a foot, two foot deep at 50 feet, I can find it. That just helps you track that bait that much quicker. And then, of course, on your left side, you've got your range down. I've got mine set on a 20 foot range. I've got it set on a 90 foot range out in front of me. So I'm looking, you know, at no more than 20 feet down. None of these fish where I've been fishing have been deeper than that. And then the, the distance out. That's a big thing. If you're new to live sonar, go to a dock go to a bridge piling go to something that's a visible structure coming above the surface of the water and then set your range at whatever you you know whatever you can read at whatever works good for you but then ease up to that structure see how far that is see how long of a cast that is for you to make when it's at 50 feet do the same when it's at 40 feet do the same i'm just feathering that foot pedal the nose of the boat's kind of swinging around to the left i'm kind of just feathering that foot pedal to to keep that on the screen The thing that we will learn, have already learned a lot with, and we'll, we'll continue to learn as anglers, is using, using this tool to help us, you know, determine the right bait for the job. Just being able to watch the mood of the fish. Is it a jerk bait? Is it the reaction bite of a, of a heavy spoon or a jig or something to drop in front of those fish that kind of speeds past them and gets a bite out of them? Is it just a crankbait or something that you burn through them? Will they bite? dropping the bait through them you know getting underneath of them we, where we always talk about keeping the bait above their head that's the that's the neat thing with this tool is that as an angler it's going to help you cycle through baits quicker and say you can make two or three casts watch how the fish react say nope that's not the right bait i can lay that down pick up something else you don't fish with it for an hour before you're like they're just really not biting the jerk bait today or they're really not biting a crank bait whatever it may be but here he comes Yep. Oh, how did you not get stuck? He's still thinking about it. Oh, here's some more. Yep, got one of them. I figured one of those would end up doing it. There's like four or five more with it. That's a nice, healthy one there. That jerk bait, there's really just nothing better to uh, to target suspended fish out out in open water that are especially that are keyed in on bait because they're you know you can really keep that bait up in front of them 
and you get a reaction bite out of them. I mean, that's what makes a suspending jerk bait special to start with is being able to get a suspended bass to react to something. Top waters and suspended jerk baits are really a couple of the main ones. This place that I'm on right now, it's got a lot of bait in it. It's got a lot of shad, there's a lot of crappie. So a very natural color jerk bait like that in this clear water is what you want to go with. That elite blue is just a dynamite color and that shadow wrap shad, that's just a, just a great size bait to imitate the kind of bait fish that these fish are already feeding on out there in this lake. Let me get the bait back in and get to them. Look at all those fish sitting in the top of that tree. My goodness. There we go. Get the bait right above their heads. You hit it. Yep, there we go. That was awesome. But you just, you, you kind of play with them, you know, and, and can see can see what they want with the bait and how they how they want it how they want it presented how they want it uh, you know the, sometimes you got to really pause the bait and kind of let it hang or if you've got a bait weighted to where it will sink a little bit how much better it is that that bait actually sinks there's just so many factors that we can we can learn from it by seeing you know seeing those baits sitting down there and just being able to to play with those fish and there's there's a lot you can learn with it and, and see exactly what those fish are doing. It's very hard to talk when fish are just absolutely chewing like they are right now, I'll just be quite honest. The game of cat and mouse with live imaging has, uh, has went to a whole new level.